First of all, I want to say happy Veterans Day to the brave men and women who have and are currently serving our country. In honor of that, we're talking the Liberator. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking The Liberator, the brand new war show. Four episodes on Netflix, but just looking at the poster and the trailer, you can tell this is a show unlike anything you have seen before. Get in that comment section. Let's talk about it. So in 1943, a unit from Oklahoma composed of Native Americans, Mexican Americans, and Dust Bowl Cowboys, most of whom couldn't drink together in the same bars back home, landed in Sicily and endured a brutal 500-day trek through Nazi-occupied Europe. This is the story of those men, a group of soldiers known as the Thunderbirds. So obviously the topic of conversation is not going to be the fact that this is a war show, even though it's a great thing to come out on Veterans Day, and we'll talk about the story here in just a second, but I do want to talk about the look, the animation of sorts of this show. It is called Trioscope or Trioscope Technology. Now we've heard of Rotoscope before. We've seen something like A Scanner Darkly or uh, Last Year, Undone. But this technology, described as an evolved iteration of animated imagery created with a new patent-pending technology and innovative platform that makes it possible to achieve a vivid 3D graphic novel look. It brings photo real level of emotion to human faces and unprecedented detail to character movement and action. It blends 3D CGI painted environments, live action footage, and traditional 2D animation. And this is, according to what I'm reading right now, the very first show done utilizing that technology. So essentially, they're shooting in front of a blue screen, they're using actual actors, and they're just kind of painting what they describe as more emotion onto their faces. And I will admit, I was very hesitant going in. And it's not something that works all the way for me. There is a bit of a disconnect between the characters and myself in this show, and that could have to do with the animation. The fact that, um, yes, certain lines of dialogue were a bit over the top. They're kind of spouting out one-liners all through this show, and I wasn't a huge fan of some of the conversations, even though the meat of those conversations was there, and I was eventually won over uh, by a few of these really just chilling scenes describing and portraying what happened happens to these soldiers because I am a sucker for a war movie or TV show. You guys know 1917 was my favorite movie of last year. Band of Brothers is one of my favorite TV shows, limited series of all time, and I think there's a comparison to be made here between this show and Band of Brothers. Obviously not between the looks of the two shows, but in terms of the camaraderie between the soldiers and what we see here, the interactions and what they end up going through, especially once we get past the first two episodes into episode three. I thought episode three was phenomenal. That is there, and I think that's present, and it's honestly beautiful. If you're looking for something new to watch on Veterans Day, I think this is a show for you, but obviously there will be a disconnect with many people when it comes to the look and the style of the show, and it's just so different. Now, it does add to certain scenes when it comes to the powerful aspects of the visuals. Um, they do add quite a bit. Part of me does wish that this was done just traditional live action or traditional animation, uh, only because I think with a war show, part of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get emotional through this story, and it's hard to do when there's a wall that you have to get past, um, in this case, an animation style that we've never seen before, and one that we're just going to have to kind of accept if we're not a huge fan of the way that it looks, and I'll be honest with you, Within the first episode, I wasn't all there on the way it looked and the way it felt, but by the time I get into the end of episode two and episode three, I didn't mind it. My brain just kind of adjusted, I got used to it, and it is beautiful to look at, no doubt. But when it comes to something new like that, that's something our brain is just going to have to accept. So I've just seen a bit of back and forth online as, oh, I can't get past the look of it, and I understand that, but then others are saying, I actually kind of like the look of it, and that's kind of where I was eventually. I got used to it. I'm like, okay, I accept this series for what it is. Now, again, I I'm going to look at the dialogue here and say, maybe it was a bit over the top at times. They're kind of spouting out one-liners. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. 
And I like these lines of dialogue. It's just they're kind of saying them as a one-liner with the pauses and, you know, the nods. And it did feel a bit cheesy at times. But again, those moments are moments that are going to get to me no matter what because of the circumstances that our soldiers are in. Um, so once I kind of embraced this show for what it was, then you start looking at the story and you look at the fact that you have all of these different men, like it said, Native Americans, Mexican Americans, you have the good old cowboys, and they're all coming together to obviously accomplish their missions and their goals, but just try to survive uh, together. And we have a few characters here and there who are so scarred from their experiences um, that they're not too keen on the fact that maybe, you know, I suffered an injury, I have to go home. I don't want to go home. I and mean, this wasn't my mentality going in, but you really see the brutality of war and the toll that it takes on you. There's a conversation had early on between a member of the opposing side and our side uh, where he says, you know, obviously he's anti what the Americans stand for. But even he says something interesting. He says, why would you fight with someone for a country that doesn't even accept the fact that you can have a beer together uh, when you go home? And that's the sad, honest truth of what some of these soldiers were having to deal with. We're going to go fight for this country, but when we go back, they don't necessarily have the respect for us, even though we are putting our lives on the line. So that is kind of this uh, underlying plot thread that I loved, and it continued throughout the entire show. Now, we do have the characters that we focus on, a few in particular that were standouts, and I thought the acting was really well done. Yes, some of the lines were a bit over the top, but the delivery of these lines and just um, the way that you can tell the emotion expressed, even down to two characters nodding uh, to each other, you just know that there's this mutual respect there and they even within their own uh, group of people encounter those that don't have the respect for their fellow soldiers and this troop they're sticking up for each other and I thought that was wonderful to see you see them train together you see them make sacrifices for each other there are a handful of soldiers that do things in this show that are just unimaginable to think about and I thought that was beautiful um, and then that's when the animation kind of comes in and adds another flair another element to this show that I will admit maybe wouldn't have had without that animation. So it's a bit of a give and take for me there. I think it's going to be more take for others. And then you look at the detail of this animation. So finally starting to accept the look of it and how uh, truly remarkable it is utilizing that technology. That's impressive as well. Uh, but the standout episode for me and when the show finally started to really come together was episode three. I sat back and said, this is one that... Um, I really think it's found its stride, and episode three is just nonstop from beginning to end. I was locked in, really loving what these characters were giving us, and uh, the battles, not just the battle, the battles that they're fighting all throughout are so interesting and fascinating to watch, and just that mental state of what they're having to go through. And if you've seen something like Band of Brothers, then you've seen this before. Um, I don't know if that's the comparison to make, but that's this the show that automatically everyone's going to throw out. Um, clearly, I don't think this is as good as Band of Brothers, but the story as a whole and seeing everyone here come together and fight this war together, I thought was a really beautiful thing to watch and witness. And I believe it was captivating enough. There are just little things I wish they would have brought more to the forefront. A bit of exploration left. And again, the animation is something that I think a lot of people are going to have to get past. But overall, you know, being a sucker for this genre, again, I just... Anything that we get that handles it in a way that's different, like this one does, or interesting, I'm at least a fan of. So I had a good time with The Liberator. I want to know what you guys think. Were you a fan of this show? Could you even get past the animation? Uh, and before I give you my score, thanks so much for tuning in. If you want to drop a thumbs up button on this video, that would be awesome. Stay tuned. Plenty more Netflix reviews. I'm going to go with 7 out of 10. A 70% for The Liberator. Had a good time with it. I think it's the perfect day for this to release. Only four episodes. Each episode around 45 minutes. Uh, but it really kicks into gear in episode 3. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more, uh, and I'll see you later.